Is your deadlift struggling? Well, today I'm gonna to teach you how to add 40 kilograms to your max deadlift in a very short amount of time. Welcome to today's episode of One Take Your Daily Butt Kicking, where we talk about all things fitness, strength, and motivation, if you don't know. I'm Connor Anderton, I'm an online coach of 10 years, specializing in getting guys pretty sick physique transformations and getting them incredibly strong in the process. Now, today's episode, talking about all things deadlift. How are you going to add 40 kilos to your deadlift in a very short amount of time? So I'm gonna teach you how I did it. I went from a 260 kilo deadlift to a 300 kilogram deadlift in around three months, 12 weeks time, something like that. And I wanna talk you through the process, the mindset behind putting a lot of you know, a lot of extra weight into your deadlift in what you would class as a short time frame. Three months is not very long at all. 40 kilos is a lot of weight, okay? If you're in the US, if you don't use the same system as us, that's 88 pounds, I believe, you know? So 40 kilos, 88 pounds. How do we, how did I do it? Okay, so I went from a 260, not really deadlifting too much at the time, I think like too often, I was deadlifting, um, but I wasn't focusing purely on strength. And then we started to kick it up a notch, get into like some really big numbers and really just hone it in on the strength side of stuff, right? So step number one of how you're gonna do it, how I'm gonna help you out is thinking about your accessory lifts. So we are gonna talk about the deadlift, but I wanna talk about the accessory lifts that truly helped my actual deadlift really, really increase. So if you're not doing accessories to the deadlift, that is gonna be, literally the first thing I advise that you do and put them into your routine at least once a week. Okay, absolutely once a week. So if you deadlift, let's say on a Monday, I want you to do an accessory lift of the deadlift on a Thursday. That's probably gonna be the sweet spot. Maybe a Friday would do it, um, but Thursday or Friday, okay? So my favorite accessory lift for the deadlift, and one that I felt got me way past you know, the numbers I expected it in that time frame was the pause deadlift, okay? And when I say pause deadlift, there's like so many variations of this from like the timings that people pause, whether it's a one second, two second, three second. Do they pause just off the floor? Do they pause at the knee? Do they pause mid shin? It all depends on a lot of factors. However, let's think about where most people struggle. They struggle to get the bar off the goddamn floor. It's a deadlift at the end of the day. So we need to put the emphasis and train the movement in a very, very difficult spot. So you're not gonna be crazy strong in this position, but it's gonna make you crazy strong. You always gotta remember that when you're training for strength, you have to leave your ego at the door. Do things at submax. do things that challenge your weaknesses so that they're not weaknesses anymore. Let them be everybody else's weaknesses, okay? So as you're doing your training and you're looking like you're lifting lighter weights, well, just realize that you lift them lighter weights with purpose and that is to become stronger than everyone else, okay? So, pause deadlift. In terms of timing, I recommend around a two count pause. I never like actual seconds, kind of like a one, two, uh, rather than a one Mississippi, two Mississippi, or however you count them, I don't know. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna pull that slack out the bar, and as soon as that bar starts to rise off the floor, and you get just off the floor, literally just off the floor, that's where you're going to pause and then you're going to explode through the lift. It might seem a bit tricky in that position, but it's supposed to be. So this is literally taking all momentum out of the lift. So as soon as you've got all that, them lats tight, you know, the glutes are switched on, everything is just ready to rock. That's when that bar starts to move off the floor when you've initiated the lift. That's when you're going to stop and that's when you're going to pause. And it sucks to pause in that position. But trust me, it's going to get you crazy strong. It's going to help you with... Um, you know, any sort of like stall that you have in that, that position, it's gonna get you crazy strong off the floor, okay? So that's gonna be my favorite accessory lift. My next favorite accessory lift, if I'm being honest, is, I don't know why I lie, it's a weird thing to say, but you know, I shoot it in one take, so whatever comes out of my mouth happens. The, uh, <laughs> the second favorite accessory lift for the uh, deadlift is, the, uh, is a block pull of some form. Okay, so we've, we're training the, the lift off the floor and pausing off the floor, and now we're starting it just below the knee, okay? Again, from coaching many people, especially from a strength point of view, um, 
Well, the one, the two places where I notice people fail. One is off the floor, and two is at the knee. So generally, when people get it past the knee, they tend to lock it out. The problem is getting it past the knee. Okay, so what you're going to do, you're going to train it from when you're about to get past the knee, so just below, and that's where you're going to start overloading the lift. You actually might find that you're a little bit weaker in this position. Some people can just lift crazy amounts of weights from that position because, of course, it's a short and range motion. But for some people, it's absolutely not the case, and it reveals where your weaknesses lie, you know, the, the weakness being in like the quads, the quads very much take over at that point and your glutes as well. So anytime you stand up and you flex into uh, the, the finishing portion of the deadlift, think about what is really working at that point. You've used a lot of hamstrings and lower back and glutes and stuff like that, but you really finish through with flexing the quads down. That's how you, you know, you straighten your leg. You can't straighten your leg without a quad flex. It's as simple as that. So quads get hammered in that point. Glutes get hammered, of course, back, lats, all that stuff as as normal. Um, but yeah, a block pull from just under the knee and you want to overload from that point. I would always recommend keeping the rep ranges a little higher. I don't want you hitting maxes or anything like that. That'd be silly because you just burn out your nervous system and affect your training block. But definitely working in like that four to six rep range. Um, again, within that 80 to 90% sort of threshold, 90% is probably pushing it for an accessory, maybe 75 to 85% and working with that. Okay, so those are my two favorite accessory lifts that are gonna put a hell of a lot of weight on your deadlift. Remember, once a week, working three to five sets once a week will absolutely do it and always working your accessory list between 75% to 85%-ish. You could go even lower on the pauses. You can even go as low as 65% on your pauses to start off your training block as you build them up. But I hope that gives you some information for that. Now, the second thing that is going to put um, a lot of weight on your deadlift is technique, okay? So the more that you deadlift, the better your technique's gonna get. A lot of people will kind of like monger deadlift and just kind of rip it off the ground, but you really, really want to hone your technique and refine it so that you're pulling that bar in an absolute optimal position. It sounds boring, it sounds sciencey, and some people just want to lift, that's fair. But at the same time, everything moves faster and easier in a straight line what you find is people's knees are too far past the bar that doesn't mean it's a bad thing necessarily as long as you you know you've got the ability to move from there but generally you want your knees out the way and that's going to affect where your, your starting position is for your hips and that's going to affect where the starting position is for your shoulders and your arm position and you want your arms to be really straight with that bar you want your hip position to be high enough but not low enough and you don't want your knees past the bar because you don't want the bar to curve around anything it needs to go as straight a line as possible because that's where you're going to be strongest so technique is something that you're going to have to work really really hard for take your time reps 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 as soon as you've done like a thousand reps five thousand reps ten thousand reps you tend to get pretty good at this stuff right so if you're a little bit of a newbie at the moment don't rush don't overload the bar too quick because we can't build technique at max it's as simple as that we can only build technique at sub maximal weights Okay, so really keep that in mind. Again, with strength, you have to keep your ego at the door early on in order to get crazy strong. If you try to push too soon too often, you will not get crazy strong. You will be stuck at subpar weights at the end of the day. Okay, so guys, number one, we've got your accessory list. Number two, we've got technique has to be honed in. And that comes down to the third thing, which is mindset. If you've watched my other videos, like talking about how to get a strong bench press, mindset is in there as well. And I'll be honest with you, the more videos I do on these strength-based tip videos, mindset will probably be the, uh, the thing that stands out the most. Or I think that I put in there the most, more consistently. Because it's the one thing that really, that you really need for a big deadlift. You've got a lot of weight, having to pull it off the ground, your nervous system gets smashed a bit, so you're very tired. And you kind of have to overcome a lot of demons in order to lift a heavy deadlift. Sounds a little cheesy, sounds a little bit dramatic, but it's very true. And if you've ever pulled a maximal deadlift, you know that you've got to kind of go to that, that place in your mind that really, really pushes you. Um, that really tests you. And I've, I've been into like bad places before where I've just not been able to pull the deadlift because I'm overthinking it. My head's not right. And it proves, and that's for lighter lifts. So when I was pulling upwards of 300, I, I had days where I, I could barely pull 200 because my head was a mess. Um, so you've got to be really switched on, okay? So preparation mentally is really important. If you come in overthinking it, you're going to have a problem. 
One thing I really recommend you don't do is overthink the lift for too long in the day. So if you're lifting in the evening and you're constantly thinking about this deadlift in the day, in the morning, in the afternoon, you're going to mentally burn yourself out. You need to learn to relax and save all that fuel, save that energy, save that mental energy for when you're warming up and when it comes to the lift. I've witnessed people overthink the lift all day. And when it comes to it, they're absolutely burnt out. Don't be that guy. Be a guy who saves it up uses it when it's needed, and then you can you can approach the lift properly. Okay, so mindset's gonna be the big one. You have to believe that that, that weight is gonna move. You have to believe that you can get strong as hell, and you have to save the mental energy for the lift. And that is my three tips on how you're gonna put 40 kilos onto your deadlift. It might not sound insane, it might not sound crazy. You might have seen videos where they're asking you to jump on one leg, do a backflip and land on your ears. And that's going to put 40 kilo on your deadlift. But I don't do bullshit. I do proven stuff, simple stuff. The body is way more simple than we think. To progress it, it's way more simple. We do not need fancy stuff in order to get strong. We need tried, tested methods that have worked for centuries now <laughs> that um, that aren't special, that don't look fancy, that don't sell well, but uh, that absolutely work. I put myself for it, put all my clients for it, and it works. Trust me on that. So give these three things a try. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you get on. If you enjoyed this video, if you like the information I'm giving you, please consider liking the video. If you're not subscribed already, subscribe. Um, the channel is doing very well at the moment, so it'll be nice to see it continue to grow and get as much information about lifting, you know, to, to as many people as possible. That's the goal. Uh, but guys, yep, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you in tomorrow's video.